Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And we'll watch the screen. We say, Blessed be is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear these words from the Gospel of Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find there a colt that has been, never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, Why are you doing, what are you doing, untying this colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and they sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna is the king, coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Please join as we sing a processional hymn. <laughs>
You may be seated. We begin the service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are admonished to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. With the called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The worship continues with the Kyrie. <laughs> Oh. 
be with you. And also, and also with you. With you. Together we pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take our flesh upon him and to suffer death on the cross. Grant that we may share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. Today we read the second lesson from the second chapter of Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself. Taking on the form of a slave, being born in the human likeness, being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing, Jesus loves me as the children come forth for the children's message, and please bring your palm branches with you. Turn once again to praise you, singing hosannas, which means save us. And when we save, when we ask you to save us, you will, because you said, This is what I came for. And for that, we give thanks. And all God's children said, Amen. Thank you for coming up. You may go back to your seats. I invite the rest of you to stand for the God, for the Lenten verse.
To Mark, the 14th chapter. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread. After he blessed it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. And he said to them, This is my, the, my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is my body. This is my blood. These words have troubled many people throughout all of ages. And these words were certainly confusing for the disciples who heard them on the night Jesus first spoke them when they had gathered that evening for the Passover meal. This was a meal that they had li likely eaten together in the past. It was a meal celebrated by the Jews to remember when the Israelites were finally freed from captivity from the Egyptians, when the final plague was announced that all firstborn humans and animals would perish unless the Lord saw blood on the doorposts of their homes. And when the Lord saw the blood on the doorposts, he would pass over these homes and no death would come to that house. The Jewish people were commanded to remember this event by hanging this Passover, having this Passover meal every year. On this night, however, the Passover meal would take on a new meaning. The atmosphere around the supper table had already become pretty uncomfortable, and Jesus looked at the guests who were with him that night and announced, One of you will betray me. And then it got worse when Jesus told all of his disciples that they would all become his deserters. And the disciples had started to get used to hearing things that they didn't understand, such as the Son of Man would suffer and die and on the third day rise again. Their list of things they didn't understand got longer on this night when he broke bread and said, This is my body. And then when he passed the cup and said, This is my blood. At the heart of this confusion for the disciples and for so many people today, it is found in the two words, this is. The disciples must have wondered, how can this be Jesus' body and blood if he was serving bread and wine? The disciples must have thought that Jesus must have meant something else when he said, this is my body and blood. Jesus was fully aware of this confusion and told his disciples not to tell anyone the things that he had taught them until he had been risen from the dead. But even after seeing the empty tomb on the first Easter, the disciples didn't fully understand everything that they had heard Jesus say. And the words, this is, remains hard for many to believe today. Martin Luther and Ulrich Zwingli who was another well-educated leader of the Reformation, agreed on many things in the church that needed reforming. But when it came to the Lord's Supper, they parted ways as they debated over this matter of what this is means. Once again, Zwingli sided with the disciples who did not believe the straightforward words of Jesus when he said, this is. Zwingli thought when Jesus said, this is, he really meant to say, well, this is like. Or the bread and wine are merely symbols of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. 
And to this day, the Lord's Supper does not carry the same depth of meaning in all churches. Interestingly, this past year during the pandemic, it seems to have even given evangelical Lutherans license to change the words that Jesus gave us to say when we receive the Lord's Supper. With the creation of single-service communion kits or the authorization to simply commune at home, the words, this is my body given for you, has often been modified to say, given and shed for us. And some would think that this one word change doesn't make much difference. But this slight change can leave you wondering if the forgiveness of sins really includes you. And this is just another example of how still today, Satan still whispers into the ears, attempting to create unbelief, where there once was faith by saying, did Jesus really say, this is my body given for you? This is my blood shed for you? One of the questions that this first uh, that this class of First Communion students was asked to answer after studying the words of institution, institution, which was the gospel reading for today, was what did Jesus mean when he said, this is my body, this is my blood? And after working with these students, it was great to hear the childlike faith in this age of children that understand the real presence of Jesus in the Lord's Supper. And so they responded, this is, means what Jesus said. This is my body. This is my blood. And the Lord's Supper is not a symbol or simply a remembrance of what Jesus did when he first instituted the Lord's Supper, when the disciples remembered the Passover meal. But it is Jesus coming directly to you and forgiving you of your sins. Now Jesus couldn't have made these words any more simple or clear. Jesus is really present in the Lord's Supper. Unlike the Passover meal, which remembered when the Lord passed over the homes of the people that put blood on the doorposts, Jesus doesn't look to you to see if you have made some kind of sacrifice before this meal. Jesus' death on the cross is the only sacrifice that was needed, and it removes sin. Jesus' blood, we heard, was the New Testament. It was Jesus' last will and testament that you are to become heirs of the forgiveness of sins. And your sins are not passed over. They are forgiven unconditionally and forever. To reduce the Lord's Supper to anything less than believing that your sins are forgiven only by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is to doubt what Jesus meant when he said, This is. Jesus heard these same two words the first time from his heavenly Father when he was baptized. When Jesus came up from the water, Jesus heard his Father say, This is my son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. And again, when Jesus heard these words from his father, there were no qualifications or conditions to what this is meant. But Satan was the first person to appear in the wilderness immediately after Jesus was baptized and slightly changed what God said into something that means something entirely different. Satan's first words to Jesus following his baptism were, If you are the Son of God. Well, Jesus recognized that Satan had changed, this is my son, to if you are my son. But Jesus refused to believe anything less than what his father had already told him. On this Palm Sunday, let us have childlike faith. Childlike faith with believing hearts that Jesus has come to you in the Lord's Supper and not only forgiven the sins of the disciples who first betrayed him, but he is the real presence who has come to you in the Lord's Supper. And when you hear Jesus say to you, this is my body given for you, this is my blood shed for you, 
you will simply believe. Amen. I invite you to join as we sing the hymn of the day. We invite you to follow along with the words that will be on the screen or in the insert in your bulletin for the baptism of Relin May Witzel. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity, and in the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. And as we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. I ask you up here today, who presents Raylynn May Witzel to be baptized? In Christian love, you have presented Raylynn for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring her to the services of God's house and teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. And as she grows in years, you should place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for her instruction in the Christian faith that living in the covenant of her baptism and in communion with the Church, she may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? The Lord be with you. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks that in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. Go ahead and start pouring some water in there. By the gift of water you nourish and sustain us and all living things. By the waters of the flood you condemned the wicked and saved those whom you have chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea and out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. And in the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit so that those who are baptized today may be given new life. Wash away the sin of all those who are cleansed by this water and bring them forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptized. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He was suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let you hold that a minute. Thank you. All right, Ray Lynn, why don't you come over to the side here? Ray Lynn, May Witzel, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Raylan, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And go ahead and wave her. Very good. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to a new life through this holy sacrament. Pour your Holy Spirit upon Raylin, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Okay, Bryce, would you light the baptismal candle? Since I can't reach it. Raylin, now let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon the parents of Raylin. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their child. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with their child the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has made Ray Lynn a new member in the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. I ask you to uh, join along as we welcome Ray Lynn into the Lord's family. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, and a worker with us in the kingdom of God. Very nice. We do have a few gifts for you. First of all, here is Relin's baptismal certificate, and here is the certificate for sponsors for being here today. Our church has now uh, started to make a baptismal ark for each of the baptized children. Could you hang on to that too? And within it, we, of course, we want to keep the important things. And today we get to see many of the milestones that happen in, in uh, the faith in the church. Holy Communion is one of them. So one day I would hope that Raylan might put her chalice in there and her certificate when she uh, receives her first communion, uh, confirmation, uh, first Sunday school papers, all those things to go into there. And within there is a sheet that explains uh, how 
We are saved through the ark. Uh, Noah and his family were saved by the ark, and the ark of the covenant was God's word that protected them through their life. And uh, that is God's word that will continue to do that as well. Here is also from the Faith Community Nursing Room, Dustin, if you'd have that too. And of course, we have a wonderful quilt. Mary Lynn, would you mind coming to me? Oh my goodness, <laughs> she is so little. <laughs> All right, hi, Ray Lynn. Yes. So today, her heavenly father said the same thing as he said to Jesus. This is my beloved child. With her I am well pleased. And there is nothing that can separate her from the kingdom of God. And so we give thanks that she has been wrapped by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And she is protected uh, by the ark. But it is through the water of baptism. Not the ark that sailed through the sea. Not by the ark of the covenant that the Israelites carried through the land. But through God's word and the water that has protected her and given her new life this day. I think we should welcome her with your applause. Very good. Are you ready to go back to mom? I bet you are. Very good. All right, you may be seated. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you sent your Son, not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, show us the answer to your people's prayer of Hosanna, save now in the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, we bring before you the sick, distressed, and needy. We remember today Jason Aberson, Tanya Vallen, Vern Andall, David, Carl, Eric, Lindsay, and Emily Comas, Rachel Aberson, Tom Simmonsma, Joanne Hamry, Rhoda Wold, Ordell Krogsted, Ella Riswold, Paul Ramsdahl, Lisa Jervig, Lisa Tiedemann, Gloria Creer, Judy Fox, Don Williams, Don Vallen, John Jurgensen, Daryl McMahon, Jerome Johnson, Jordan Alderman, Gail Severson, Don Koopman, Leroy Koopman, Fred Tiedemann, Mike Wustewald, Eugene Hawks, Javen Einan, Jessica Shaw, and other names we now raise silently before you. Give your abiding comfort in every circumstance that in Christ we shall not die but live and declare his works. Lord, in your mercy. Look with favor on all communicants at your table. Grant that they would come penitently and in faith to eat your son's true body and drink his blood for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, here we remember the sufferings and death of your son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. 
Praising his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw near in strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And let's give a sign of God's peace to one another as we do so, and we welcome those signs of peace for those joining us online this day. And we give thanks for the gifts that we have received this day and we have received throughout this week. Uh, these are where the noisy can offerings are going for, uh, from Baltic and East Nidros. And in response to these gifts that we have received, we sing, Create in Me a Clean Heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on the tree of the cross gave salvation to all, that where death began their life might be restored, and that he, who by a tree once overcame, might a tree be overcome. And so at the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He broke it and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, when supper had ended, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink this in remembrance of me. Then he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
We had a great class of first communicants this year. It's one of my favorite things to do is to teach these uh, kids and get them prepared to receive the Lord's Supper and what it means. And from Baltic uh, this year, we have Jeremiah Davis, Kyla Hansen, Ellie Pickett, and Tenley Witzel. And then joining us at East Nidros in a while will be Grant Endall, Karis Harvey, Jaden Murphy, Kaylee Simmonsma, and Julia Westover. As they receive their first communion, I'm going to invite the, the uh, uh, first communicant and their family to come forward. I'll have the communicant come to the center of the rail and kneel. The, uh, the family members just surround them, and you will all receive the Lord's Supper here. And I'll invite each family up separately, and then we are done. Then everybody will be invited over to the station on the right uh, for the Lord's Supper. So at this time, I'll invite Jeremiah Davis to come forward with his family.
want you to come over on this side. You come over on this side then. Yep, yep, yep. You're good. This is the body of Christ given for you. and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. The Lord bless and keep you and keep you in Jesus' name. The Lord bless and keep each of you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. and keep it to you in Jesus' name. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the body of Christ given for you. This 
This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. John, John, well, I'll go ahead and take this. No. It's the blood of Christ. Amen. Thank you. You want to take this? Lead this. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life, and we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. 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 I invite you to sing along with our sending hymn, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross.
Stand and serve your neighbor. Yes, we will. Thanks be to God.